Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. I'm just going to go over today what I do with the 12 candle window for 50 pips a day. I'm going to review my process and what I do and the approach that I take each day and then we'll look at some examples of the last few days of charts to see how that can be applied and how I traded the trades that I did take. So to reiterate, I use the 15 minute charts. The main pairs that I trade are the pound USD, the pound yen, the pound Swiss, the pound Canadian, the pound Aussie, and the pound New Zealand. First thing I look at is the general structure and pattern of the trend. And just to reiterate, I will make these notes available of how I trade this on my blog. First thing I look at though is the uh, geometric pattern, the pattern of the trend. Are we in any sort of uh, bigger geometric shape, head and shoulders, three push patterns, reverse head and shoulders, a descending triangle, a double bottom, uh, ascending triangle, double top, again rectangles. Uh, that helps me identify geometric patterns for potential measured moves for profit targets for asymmetrical risk reward and the type of setup. Am I looking at a sell setup or buy setup uh, or a trend trade setup? I'm mainly focused on horizontal ranges no matter what the geometrical pattern. So what that means is that I will have a high and a low and a level at which I will be trading as either a break of a range, false break, reversal, a trend trade, or a trading range, which we'll get into in a little bit here. But I do not trade diagonal trend line breaks. I typically do not look at diagonals of any value to, to my trading other than uh, for a trend line break as an indication of a possible change in trend direction for a trade setup, not the, the trend line break itself. The second thing I look at is the high and the low. Where is the high and where is the low? Now, typically we talk about the high of the day and the low of the day, but we also may be trading inside of a high and low, uh, which are the true high and low. So the last area where the market sold down from and the last area where the market bought up from. And if we are inside of that high and low, then we are inside of a consolid we're in a consolidation inside of a high and a low. <clears throat> Not to say that we can't see a um, trade evolve out of that consolidation, but generally speaking, where you're inside of a true high and a true low. So we're inside of a rectangle. The most important thing I look at uh, specifically is timings. So once we've established where our high and our low are uh, and the type of pattern of the trend. So again, the three things that markets do, which we'll get into in a minute, uh, they break out, they pull back, they fill more orders and they trend. They break out, they pull back and they reverse. That's a false break reversal or they break out, they pull back and they go into a trading range. So when we've established our high and our low and our potential pattern of the trend, if there's a, a setup there that we can identify with. So again, I'm not looking to trade every move in the market. I'm looking to trade specific setups from my playbook for either selling, buying, or trend trades. My focus is then on the three hour window. One hour before the market equity markets open, the hour of the equity market opens, and the hour after the equity market opens. Hence, 12 15 minute candles. That's our three hour 12 candle window. <clears throat> These are the specific times 8 to 11 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time, 2 to 5 a.m. and 8 to 11 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time for Asia, Europe, London, and New York. This allows me to have a laser like focus for some simple recurring setups that offer, occur frequently enough for selling, buying, or trend trading setups. This repeatable cycle is recurring in all three 12 candle windows, whether or not the range, the pattern, and a good risk reward trade setup is in each window is unpredictable. But essentially out of the six pairs, there typically is one ideal setup almost every single session. The next thing I look at are the numbers. So 
Typically, these trades will come off of round numbers, specifically double zeros and 50s. The quarter levels, 25 and 75, will often be a stump stop hunt extension of a 50 or double zero trading box. So what that means is that we may see the market trade to those levels, but they'll often either be in a breakout pullback continuation level, or they will be the stop hunt extension where the market is trading between 50 and zero. It might go to 75. Uh, it might go below double zeros to 75. It might go down to 50 for a move back to double zeros. Uh, but we don't necessarily have to go to the quarter extensions, but in the majority of time, these trades will be from zeros to 50s or 50s to zeros or zero to zero. And um, often the quarter extensions will be stop hunts. How do we tell this? Well, this goes back to what we just talked about with the timings. This three-hour window gives us a very specific idea if we have a setup, number one. Uh, if it's an ideal setup, we can often have a stop hunt, trap, and a trade, which again we're going to talk about in a minute. But numbers, so I'm paying, I pay very specific attention to numbers and timings because I will often look to enter in at the numbers. I look for engulfments and pin hammers. These can be with the trend or they can be reversals for stop hunts or in a trading range. So we could be selling off the high of a range or buying off the low of a range if the range is large enough for us to have an asymmetrical risk reward. I look to enter the majority of my trades at or near the numbers. Regardless of that level that I'm looking to get in at, I will often limit order these trades. If it's a fast moving market or if the market is confirming a trade on a third leg, I will often get filled at the market, which in the majority of cases can be at or near the numbers. My average stop loss is one ATR. So for most of the pairs, it will be around 20 pips. The pound Aussie, the pound New Zealand will be 25 on the average normal occasion. Depending on the level of volatility on the day, on the pair, it may be a bit more or less, give or take a few pips. Typically, though, I am looking for a one-bar stop. Position sizing can depend on the type of setup and the size of the stop loss. So if it's not one of my A-trade setups, but it, but it is a trade setup, my A-trade setups are the ones that I will be prepared to take more risk on. If it's a, a trade setup where I feel perhaps we're in the middle of a continuation or the move may only have 50 pips or so to go. I'm not comfortable on putting a lot of risk on, but I will still take the trade. Uh, I'll adjust my position sizing according. The minimum profit target is usually at least 50 pips. Sometimes a market may hit a previous day's higher low or the current day's higher low or significant round numbers like double zeros or 50s, and the market may go into consolidation or have hesitation there and it may only be up 40 pips. When these types of situations evolve in live time, I will be prepared to make a decision on either exiting that trade at that level to take just take the profit or holding on for a move through that level if that setup so indicates. Other trades where there's a larger geometric measured move maybe in the area of 50 to 75 or 100 or more pips. And again, depending on the setup and how that pair is trading on the day, I will make that decision based on that setup. Trade management. Once I'm in the trade, I will fight every urge that I have to interfere with that trade. I review the trade setup and thesis that I have for that trade. I'll monitor the behavior initially based on my thesis. And I will typically leave the screen or watch and monitor myself with self-talk, meditation, and possibly review other pairs to identify any sort of similar setups that may be in place. I will normally not adjust my stop loss to break even until the market has broken a high or low boundary. I wait for the 15-minute candle to close before I do move my stop or I wait for that to close 30 pips or more away from my entry position. It needs to break into the next quarterly range with a closing candle for me to do that. 
at 40 pips, depending on if the market is moved, if it's fast or a creeping sort of trend, I will potentially look to lock in at least 40 pips if the market has two-sided trading occurring near my profit target. So if the market moves 45, 46, 47 pips, but it hasn't hit my profit target, the longer that that takes, the more likely I am to lock in a minimum of 40 with, with moving my stop to 40 pips. So to clarify, if it has spent 30 minutes near my target without hitting it, I will be watching closely to lock in profits in case the market is preparing to reverse. When you're up 40 pips, you need to get paid. Self-management. We've talked about this in previous videos. Self-talk, meditation, uh, having a written plan, knowing exactly what you're looking for, paying attention to the timings, uh, all the things that you will do that can sabotage the trade in live time. So it's important to have a self-management plan to execute your process. Things that you need to be aware of or things that I am aware of that I, I do, that I become unconsciously competent regarding my, it's in my headspace constantly, is that the hour before and the hour after the 12 candle window are very important. Often we have what I call the 717. So this is the hour before the 12 candle window. 7 p.m., 1 a.m., and 7 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. There will often be a stop hunt to the high or to the low or back against the trend in the hour before the 12 candle window. It will often be in the form of a 1-2-3 style of stop hunt. For people who want to know more about that, look at the video that I've made on the three bar pattern that will change your Forex trading. Why is this important to know? Because this often is a setup that I'll look for in the first hour of that 12 candle window. When the stop hunt occurs in the hour before or the breakout occurs in the hour before, typically I will look for a first hour trade setup, meaning in that first hour of the 12 candle window. I talk about, I use the hourly rotation, the timings are critical, the market is very predictable in terms of timings. When the equity markets open, these pairs often will move and either to continue an existing trend or to reverse it or to trap traders. Typically these moves will either be at the end of the hour on the 15 minute charts or the beginning of the hour. So what that means is that typically the first candle or the last candle of each hour in that 12 candle window will often be where the trades initiate from. Every session has a stop hunt a trap and a trade setup. And this doesn't mean that every pair will set up perfectly, but it often means that within those six pairs, there will be two or three ideal candidates for an ideal trade setup. There is usually always one perfect setup, and it's my job to the best of my ability on that day at that moment to identify what I consider to be the best setup and then execute my trading process as flawlessly as possible. If there isn't something I would consider to be part of my best trading setups scenarios, then I'm comfortable with walking away from the screen. I've taken a ton of garbage trades, and I'm not interested in taking those. And so after thousands of trade setups, and knowing which trades move the quickest, the best, and often with very little stress against me being in the market, those are the types of trades that I focus on. So if it's not there, I don't trade it. My job is not to try and trade every move in the market. It is to identify the best setups that are in my playbook and then execute as flawlessly as possible. My goal is not to trade every move. My goal is to trade my best setups and keep increasing size. Time decay. So considering that the trade was entered in the correct manner with the ideal setup, First 30 minutes, my trade should have already shown some positive movement in the direction of my trade. If not, I reassess that to either exit the trade, cut the trade, or stay in the trade. If the trade is not in profit after one hour, I will often cut the trade or exit the trade. The exception is if I've entered early, but the trade thesis is still valid and positive, meaning that it is still doing what it's supposed to do. I just got in early. The profit target not hit after two hours, I will either take profit or look to exit the trade or as I mentioned earlier, lock in a certain amount and let the market continue to either move or take me out at that level. 
especially if the market is in consolidation. Very important. If a market goes into consolidation after being in the trade setup and it hasn't pit, hit my profit target, it's potentially setting up for either a reversal, consolidation, or a continuation, and that's a 50-50 area. So markets only do three things. They break out, they pull back, and they continue. As we said before, that's a trend. Markets break out, they reverse, and they do a false break reversal. Markets break out, they pull back, and they go into a trading range. Every time a market moves 50 or more pips and goes into consolidation, the market is preparing for another move, possibly to the extremes of the previous high or low of the daily levels. So important to note, if it has not broken a, a, a daily level and it's moved 50 or more pips and goes into consolidation, it can be potentially setting itself up for an ideal trade setup. Whenever a daily high or low is broken, the market is now attracting other time frame traders into the market. End of day, institutional traders, big money, larger players that may potentially be behind or add strength to a market move that day in either direction. This scenario is also very important to me to start identifying higher probability pairs for trade setups. The market trades off the numbers. The average stop hunt is 25 to 50 pips, so pay attention to the number levels. I, I focus on the number levels that the stop hunt moves towards. And then I journal each day all the trades, screenshot them, and then also journal about my performance and my mindset. So we're going to just go through a couple of yesterday's trade setups, applying the same rules that we just went through here today. And again, I will make this available on my blog in a PDF format. Keep it simple, traders. Stick to the basics. Um, the same setups are going to show up over and over again. So we're looking at yesterday's pound yen. And again, just applying our simple method, we talked about identifying profitable trades. And just mark these off. And knowing our last sell level and our last buy level, that puts us inside of a, a box when the market goes into consolidation. And we see that in the pound yen, we saw that move up, hitting traders at break even, um, setting a new initial high of the day at the Europe 12 candle window. And traders, you'll notice again, we talked about the one, two, three. So there's our stop hunt in the hour prior to the 12 candle window. Consolidation and then a engulfment breakout at the third candle of the second hour. A pin bar stop hunt to traders who were short and then a pin hammer at the London Open. So again, traders may have entered in at numbers down here after the 1, 2, 3 on an existing breakout pullback. So if we extend our Highs and lows, the, the Asian session took out the swing high. Stop on a traders at break even, didn't quite take out the high. Did a 1, 2, 3 down into the breakout. Consolidation, so 50 pip move up, a 1, 2, 3 back into the trend. An engulfment, and then a pin hammer at the London Open. And then we have a type 3 M pattern. For a sell setup for traders who may have shorted this down. And again, an example of where a market has gone one push, two push, three pushes and not hit a 50 pip move yet, unless the traders got filled up top. 81 down to 30, so they would have been 40 to 50 pips, but an example again of where if the market goes into consolidation after a 50 pip move, to make sure that you're locking in, or I look to lock in some profits when the market starts to trade sideways, I want to make sure I tighten my uh, profit target up if it has not hit my profit target. But initially, again, talking about structure, so we're in a larger rectangle, but we also had a smaller rectangle that traders may have noticed, and then again, a smaller one inside, which gave us a type 1W at the beginning of the Asian set. sorry, a type 2W at the beginning of the Asian session before trading Breaking higher, one, two, three, stop hunt in the last hour prior 
the last hour of Asia, and the one hour prior to the 12 candle window. Pin hammer, consolidation, breakout, engulfment, and then a pin hammer at the London Open for 50 pips almost up. Then, of course, the Type 3M for the move back down and heading into the U.S. session. Game, we are inside of a larger rectangle, larger structure, but we also have breakout, pullback, fill more orders and continue. And we have a Type 2W, sort of inside of the range, and an engulfment in our 12-candle window through numbers. Again, an example of where I would look to fight for a better price if the market fills away from the numbers. And then the next candle pins back through the numbers so you can get filled at the numbers or the better fill, less the spread, whatever. I always try to fight for a better price based on how that candle closes. If it closes at numbers, I will look to try and get filled at numbers. And that market continued. But the point, again, I, I look at all of these structures as horizontals. And again, three things markets do they break out they pull back they continue okay break out pull back stop hunt that went 50 pips into consolidation before coming back again giving us a type 2w for the u.s session 12 candle continuation into the trend pound new zealand just get rid of this actually we'll leave that there for now so we go back and uh, we identified initially our profitable trades from the previous session, the high, and the true high and the true low. The market opened on a gap, broke down, and then gave us an engulfment right at the initial 12-candle window of Asia. So again, marking off profitable trades. There's our high. And... Our low was the previous long from the U.S. session on Friday. We had an engulfment and a pin hammer on Friday's U.S. session. And, of course, we have the low of the week and now the new high of the week. The market traded down in Asia, and traders already may be starting to see. I had a bunch of traders email me telling me they saw my favorite type 3 M set up for the sell-off to the low of the week. And again, we talk about measured moves, geometry, a rectangle, measured move number to number. Initial target was down around 80, just below the low. But the measured move on this is one full expansion. Taking this, you'll notice again, three 50-pip boxes from 50. So we had a 25-pip stop on in the morning. An example of where the market is extended 25 pips into the quarter but the trade was off of 50 to double zeros went into consolidation engulfment okay this 1130 candle engulfs the 11 o'clock doji bull candle so we have a one two three back against the move engulfment and then a pin hammer at the end of the three hour window for the breakout down to the previous day's low, and then a one, two, three in the hour prior to the US session 12 candle window for a 50 pip move down. So we have one level, two levels, three levels of 50 pip movements, then sideways, pin hammer, breakout, consolidation, continuation, and an engulfment outside of the 12 candle window. But again, identifying profitable trades, and then looking for textbook setups. This was a textbook type 3 sell setup yesterday back to the low of the week for a measured move. And the British pound, again, we went through this yesterday, just marking off our profitable trades as we head into the beginning of the Europe London session changeover. We have our engulfment pin hammer from Asia, and we have the U.S. session sell from Friday. These are our, we're inside when the market goes into Asian session. We're trading inside of a larger rectangle, and the numbers, as you can know, are double zeros to 50. So we're in a 50-pip box. The market takes out the 
Swing highs inside of that. And again, similar to the pound yen, does a one, two, three, back against the move. So a breakout, pullback, and you'll notice numbers. The market was in a 25 pip box below 50, broke above, extended through the 25 pip box up to 50, sorry, up to double zeros, before one, two, three, 25 pip stop hunt, consolidation, breakout, bear pin, an example of a bear pin, a bear trap, and then a bull pin hammer at the London Open for a move up through the high of the day, taking out the U.S. session highs. Similar to the pound yen, we have an extended M pattern into that hour after the 12 candle window for a stop hunt back against traders who were long before continuing back into the U.S. session 12 candle window with a type 2 W formation back with the original trend. Breakout pullback continuation. So we have large rectangle, the market breaks out, pulls back, fills more orders, and continues the move. We have the market going sideways on double zeros, breakout pullback, pin hammer, type 2 W for a 50 pip move back with the original trend. So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Keep it simple. We're looking for normal geometrical patterns. These are the rules that I trade by. You're going to learn something new every day. As I said, I like to trade from horizontals. You can see why. I look at the horizontal. The true number boxes are the real boxes that we're in, but I look for horizontal trend line breaks because those are the structural patterns that I can see things clearly for myself, and I look to trade these larger structures as potentially measured moves. So I'll measure the box that I'm trading in regardless of the pattern for, and in most cases, again, you can see that it's numbers. So I'll just extrapolate that out. We're looking at 50 or 100 pip move when these markets break out and continue. And you notice that that U.S. session layered on top of the U.S. session from Friday. Keep it simple, traders. Stay focused. Keep getting better. Keep it simple. Focus on the 12 candle window if that helps you. That's uh, what I do. Have a great trading week and may the markets Hi, go Hi traders, with you. it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.